Sinestruck. Hi there, I thought it might be useful to make a video compliment to the obscure Super Nintendo games video I made last year, this time concentrating on just platformers. These games aren't exactly obscure, but they might have been glossed over back in the day and continue to be overshadowed somewhat today. And I'm sticking with just platformers because, well, there's a lot of them, and they're a very accessible genre of games that anyone can get into. I'm also going to be listing the average eBay prices of these games too, so if you're a collector or you'd just rather own the original cartridge, all the games on this video are reasonably cheap. And and if they're not, I'll say so. We'll start with Plock, featuring a character who can attack enemies by launching his limbs at them. He also uses his arms and legs for puzzle solving, which creates an interesting dynamic of fending off enemies while sacrificing mobility to unlock an area. There's vehicles you can commandeer, and there's power-ups like a flamethrower. What makes Plock stand out though is the unique visual style and great music. The soundtrack goes from raucous and uplifting to menacing to strange as you go from level to level, but the music stays cohesive. This is a fun game, and a long one too. That only goes for about $15 on eBay right now. Next is Ah! Real Monsters, a game based off of a Nickelodeon TV show of the same name. You play as three different bizarre looking monsters that each have their own strengths that lend themselves to whatever obstacle you need to deal with. You switch between the three at will, and you can work together to grab stuff out of reach. Your main attack is throwing trash at enemies, and you can also learn a special scare attack for each monster. This game isn't the best, and it's not all that polished, and I haven't seen the show, so I can't speak on that front, but this game is only $8 average, and it's really not that bad. It's okay. Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures is another solid title developed by Factor 5, otherwise known as the team behind the Super Turrican games. This is a fun action platformer that represents the spirit of the movies well, and the gameplay is a lot like the Super Star Wars games, as JVC had a hand in this game too. And yeah, it takes story elements from all three Indiana Jones movies. Yes, I said three. Don't tell me there's a fourth. It didn't happen, okay? This is a pretty long game with just one glaring flaw, the music. Man, it gets old quick. But still, this is another decent game, under $20. Arrow the Acrobat wasn't all that great, but the sequel, Arrow the Acrobat 2, is decent enough. It likely gets ignored due to the blandness and clumsy controls of the first game, but the second game corrects those problems and your character moves a lot less herky-jerky as a result, so the sequel is much faster and smoother, and it's just easier to get into. This game usually goes for like $30. It's not worth it at that price, but if you see it in the wild for a decent price, it's worth picking up. Tiny Toon Adventures is another cheap game that goes for less than 8 bucks. This is a fun one developed by Konami, it's well made and fantastic looking. There's only 6 levels here so it's pretty short, but there's a lot of bonus content in mini games, so there's a bit of variety in the gameplay. The dash mechanic especially is well done, and the game does a nice job taking advantage of it. Remember when everything Konami touched turned to gold? Well, this game was proof, it's well worth playing. Going from Warner Brothers to Disney, there's Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow, really an odd title considering this is a game where you in fact play as Donald Duck, except he's playable under two monikers, one as Detective Maui Mallard and one as Cold Shadow, the latter being an ass-kicking ninja. This game takes a bit to get into, but after the second level you can switch between the two characters at will and things pick up a bit from there. This is a fantastic looking game as you can see, the animation is top notch, and this game can usually be found on eBay for less than 15 bucks. Artie Lightfoot is a game that likely got lost in the shuffle because it's yet another anthropomorphic mascot designed for merchandising, but unlike crap like Bubsy, this game is actually pretty good. The catch here is your bird friend named Peck, who can be used as a weapon or to destroy barriers or help you fly. If you take a hit, he disappears, but you find him again in a chest. It's similar to how Donkey Kong Country works in that way. I'm cheating a bit because this one's a little pricier at around $40, but it's a solid title that never gets mentioned. It's definitely under the radar. Next I'll hit some games that I've already done full videos on, so if you want to know more, just click the annotation here. First is Phantom 2040, which is an action platformer with an emphasis on exploring huge levels. This game can be pretty confusing as to where to go and what to do, but it's a well-made game with a ton of replay value, it's usually 10 bucks. There's Hook, kind of an odd title since this game was essentially retooled to make the game Sky Blazer a couple of years later, but Hook is a good game in its own right, one of those games where your character is overpowered so you can just breeze right through all these hapless enemies. This one's less than 15 bucks on average. And there's also Cool Spot that doesn't get any more under the radar than a game that was made to advertise soda, but believe it or not, Cool Spot is pretty solid. Yeah, it's much better on the Sega Genesis, but it's still not a bad deal on the Super Nintendo if you can find it. It's around $10 on average, but again, if you can find it on the Genesis, you're better off there. 
Last, I'll mention some Japan-only Super Famicom platformers that I don't hear talked about. Some games are becoming more and more popular and more in demand, stuff like Doremi Fantasy, Psycho Dream, Maya Uo, or Magical Poppin, but those cards are legit hard to find and go for insane prices. So I'll just mention Ghost Sweeper Mikami, a great looking game with anime styled artwork, some slick level design, and some cool horror themed enemy design. The cartridge is still a bit pricey, but it's not insane like the other games I mentioned. The last auction I saw it for was for 35 bucks. If you want some cheaper imported cartridges, there's the GoGo Ackman series, and no, that's not Trunks, but this guy was designed by Akira Toriyama, the same artist behind Dragon Ball Z. These games aren't spectacular, but they're solid and they're good enough for a playthrough or two, and the first game can usually be found for about 10 bucks. So yeah, there you go, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.